everyone here in the sanctuary, as well as everyone listening on KXXX, as we celebrate, praise, and worship our God, the one who loves us before we're known and keeps loving us throughout all our days. My name is Nancy LaPel, and I'll be your lit liturgist this morning. Our music is being provided this morning by Pat Ziegelmeyer, Carla Haggard, and Monica Bugby Miller. We also want to thank Joe Hartman for being this morning's worship assistant and Scott Barnum for providing tech support. So let's worship with joy and gladness, regardless of whatever else is going on in each of our lives. With the active cases of COVID-19 in Thomas County, the church leaders would like to remind everyone of the safety precautions being taken to minimize risk of exposure and spread of the virus. Wearing the mask is now required. This is the best way to follow Jesus' teaching that we love our neighbors as ourselves. If you are feeling feverish, ill, coughing, or weak, please stay at home and listen to the radio. Please stay in the designated areas. For Sundays, that's the sanctuary, hallways, entryways, and South Bathroom. Please fill out the attendance card that's on the end of your pews and leave them in the pew. Thank you for your understanding. Please stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship. We are here to worship a remarkable God. The love of God welcomes us the grace of Christ awaits us. The joy of the Spirit enfolds us. Don't come as slaves. Come as truly free. Don't come as petitioners. Come as those who have already heard. Don't come as interlopers. Come as invited guests. Don't come as outsiders. Come as much-wanted children. The law of God emboldens us. The grace of Christ redeems us. The joy of your spirit loves us. Come as the joyful. Come as the eager. Come as the thankful. Come as the recipients of amazing grace. The love of God overflows our hearts. The grace of Christ liberates our spirits. The joy of the spirit sings in our minds. Let us pray. As we join in person and virtually to worship on this Lord's day, may the Son of God enfold you with his spirit and his love. Let him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Use this time to give to God the things that bind you so that like a dove, his spirit will descend upon your life and make you whole. We pray this through Jesus, the one who comes and fills us with grace and truth. Amen. You may be seated. Our music starts this morning with a song called Unclouded Day. They tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless days. Tell me of a 
Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Uh-huh. Carla, thank you. <laughs> Holes in the brain. Today, we begin a three-part worship series on understanding the word grace from a Wesleyan standpoint. It's one of the distinctive characteristics of Methodism. Psalm 23 is a passage of scripture used to provide comfort and strength in challenging times. As we read responsively, think and feel how the images of sheep and shepherd would have provided comfort to people of the land long ago. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The shepherd never leaves his sheep unprotected. The shepherd God comes and dwells among his sheep. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. The shepherd God is integral to life as life itself. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Sheep know the voice of their shepherd and follow it to stay safe. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. She who stay and never pray, so stay close to the shepherd God and pray. You prepare a table before me in, my, in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The shepherd God provides for my needs and cleans my wounds. Surely God and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Shepherds put their life on the line for their sheep. Our shepherd God sacrificed for his life for us. Nancy. So yesterday, um, here in the sanctuary, we celebrated the joining together of Tyler and Melanie Dishman. So the Dishmans plan on making this their church home as they raise their family. And I would just invite you to pray for them and their children as they begin married life together. As a part of that celebration, I had the chance to catch up with Gabby Miller, who continues to make strides in her recovery. Um, and uh, we're, she and I are going to be working on a way for her to come and share her the part of her journey that involves her faith and what God has been doing in her life since, as she says, she broke her car. So uh, continue to pray for Gabby uh, and her family as some things uh, that would just be normal and wrote for us, like writing and, and to be able to write the word that you hear in your ear onto a piece of paper uh, does not quite work yet. And so she continues to, to need and, and would love to have your prayers. Uh, seeing Elizabeth this morning reminded me that her and Drew are leaving this week for college. And so best of luck, and God goes with you to Baldwin and over to Baker, and then Drew is going to Seton Hall, so uh, heading out this week as well. And so blessings to you and to Drew and to all of our seniors. Uh, and I know, like you all have, have is, is your daughter on going back to K-State? Okay, so a lot of colleges are starting back up. So in the college here starting at the end of next or beginning of next week right in services tomorrow so it's time uh, for that so uh, as we go to to god in prayer this morning i would invite you into the five finger prayer method so recall that each finger has a meaning so the first finger is to pray for one person in your life who needs to know jesus the second finger is to pray for a ministry in the community. The third finger is to pray for a ministry in the church. 
The fourth finger is to pray for a couple of requests that you have said, yes, I will pray for you or for that situation. And then finally, the thumb is to pray for one thing for yourself. So as we work through the prayer, I will pause at those appropriate moments so that you can add your own personal request and needs into that. So right now we're, get, we're praying for the county health department uh, as our community ministry, unless you have another one that you personally are, are working on. And then our ministry here within uh, the church is our guardian angel ministry. And so let's go to God in prayer, shall we? God who hears when we come to you on this day, we pray for Tyler and Melanie as they awake this morning as husband and wife for the very first time. Bless them in their marriage and may they continue to seek you out and make worshiping you in word, deed, and motive a central part of their marriage. As we pray the, the five finger prayer, our index finger makes the one so we pray now for one person in our life who needs a relationship with you, either known or restored. We pause now to lift that person up to your ears so that you can give us the know-how to invite him or her into that relationship in a meaningful way. And when we go from one to two, we are reminded that we live in community. So we pray for the ministries in our community. Especially right now, we pray for the Thomas County Health Department and, and the staff of the health department. As cases of COVID rise and God has continued to give them strength as they work on all of our behalf during this time in addition to all of the other functions they have to perform in the course of their duties. Our third finger, our ring finger, contains the artery that feeds oxygen to the entire hand. So we use it to pray for the church in its ministries. In particular, we pray for the guardian angel ministry we lift up those who are making a personal connection with an elderly or limited person or couple within the church to be the point person for help. And in this crazy disconnected world in which we live right now, to be a calming presence that reflects your son. Our pinky finger reminds us of those whom we have a pinky swore to pray for. And we pause now to send those to you. Finally, O oh Lord, our thumb reminds us of ourselves as it's often used to point back at ourselves. We use the thumb to pray for one specific thing. So we pause momentarily now to say the one thing in our hearts so that you might hear it and know how to respond. So on behalf of the people, I pray for all of these things as well as the things that are left unsaid that are on our hearts, laying them at your altar through Christ our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for
custom made to order. I was riding with my daughter on our way back from Monroe. And like children do, she started playing 20 questions, but I never would have guessed one that would touch me to my soul. She said, Daddy, when we get to heaven, can I taste the Milky Way? Are we going there to visit, or are we going there to stay? Am I going to see my grandpa, and I have a pair of wings? And do you think that God could use another angel to help pour out the rain? your innocence that fills them often takes me by surprise. Like daddy, when we get to heaven, can I taste the Milky Way? Are we going there to visit, or are we going there to stay? Am I gonna see my grandpa, and I have a pair of wings? And do you think that God can And I can't wait to see my family and meet Jesus face to face. And do you think, Lord, you could use another angel to help pour out the rain? figure it out, the name of that song was Help Pour Out the Rain. This is a word I know. Prevenient grace is the grace of God that exists even before we are aware that God exists. Prevenient grace is not something we receive or earn. It's something God provides. The best biblical example of prevenient grace comes from the first half of Psalms 139, our focus for scripture today. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely, even when I misspeak it. You hem me in, before, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. 
Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. I know that very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Nancy. Are you ready to go back to all the cities and try to pronounce those this morning? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, let's pray. God, may the words that I say and the things we all do make my life song sing and all of our life songs sing and bring a smile to you. Amen. Like a lot of uh, preacher's kids, uh, my children have had their share of of negative moments in their faith journey simply because they were the pastor's kids. And my, my son in, in particular uh, would tell you uh, on his good days that he is agnostic, but probably if you put him under a lie detector test, and, uh, and especially if he wants to get his dad's ire up, he would tell you that he's an atheist. And there's lots of reasons for that, but it is what it is. He openly will share. I mean, if I handed him a mic this morning, he would openly share his ambivalence about God and Christ and especially the church. Yet I'm not particularly worried about my son's faith life as that may not sound very parental, but the reason why I'm not is that I have more faith in God's ability to love my son than in my son's ability to know what's best for him at all times, despite what he may think. The reason why I believe that my son is still in in, under God's grace is because of what John Wesley calls prevenient grace. Right? The grace of God that is there before we even know that God is there for us. Right? Grace is one of those words that's thrown about a lot in different discussions or prayers or study groups. Uh, on Christian radio, in sermons, in books, in discussions about faith. Right? Defining grace can be tricky because every faith tradition seems to have its own definition of what grace is. Well, for, for those churches that follow uh, the teachings of John Wesley, which United Methodism would be a, one of those churches, the easiest definition of grace 
is God's unconditional love. God's unconditional love. See, in his study of the scriptures, John Wesley figured out this idea, which was new in 